As of now, we are halfway through. Of course, by half, that's including all 16 students. But, what, 15? I mean, there's one student, two students. Do you see my point? Why we're maybe not quite as halfway through as we could be? Oh, well, I mean... On that uh, happy note, let's roll for the next Danganronpa FTE roundup wrap-up in a roll. One! Well, that'll be easy to count. One! Ah, ah, ah! Must you? Yes, I have to. Must every you time every I time? Every single time. Why are you so obsessed with a Sesame Street character? Because I'm 800 years old. Well, I'm I'm a few months older than your 800 years, <laughs> and I am not obsessed with a Sesame Street character. <laughs> But you are obsessed with robots. That isn't the... Okay, <laughs> fine. I'm obsessed with cool robots. Are you saying the count's not cool? You decide. Kiyotaka Ishimaru. Let's go. It's been so long, I don't know if I can remember his voice. What's that? You want to hear what I've got to say? Very well. I've got many theories on many topics and I'll share them all with you. So I certainly recognize Kiyotaka's Japanese voice, mm-hmm. but I the only thing I could remember it as is he's that one guy that always sounds like Tomokazu Seki. <laughs> and uh, sure enough, it was him. Uh, I guess his name is Toriyumi Kosuke. And something that is kind of interesting is we've got Little Max gloves and this... Strider's scarf. And this red scarf of Strider Hiryu, and he has played both those characters in different video games. Yeah, yeah. So he apparently really likes those. That's that really is funny. highly amusing that he played those characters, and that's why he likes them. Yeah. Wow. This is how far you're willing to go to try and become friends with me? I'm touched. <laughs> how nice of you! Uh, well, okay, that's good. Uh, I've missed his his forceful, loud, uh, hammer-like personality. Please don't say hammer around me. That was an amazingly bad taste. Wow! I've been wanting to tell you something for a while now, Makoto. And now that it's just the two of us, this is the perfect time to confess no! my feelings for you. Ah. Listen, Makoto, your hoodie is totes awesome. Thanks? You don't look like the sort of person who'd want to wear a hoodie, though. It's like it would get stuck on your hairstyle. You have really amazing fashion sets. Now, wearing a hoodie under your school uniform. Your public morals are ruined! Just absolutely ruined! <sighs> D- sorry? Did I do something wrong? You've broken school regulations once again! But not everybody here is... Well, I guess actually we are all wearing uniforms, aren't we? Well, the dress code was pretty flexible at my old school, so this was okay for me to wear. Well, that's not the case here at Hope Speak Academy. As long as I live, I will protect our morals. From, Ultimate moral compass. From whom? And why are you going after my uniform? What about everybody else's? Everyone else just ignores me when I talk to them. So that's really what it's about, huh? Take off that incredibly stylish hoodie this instant. Right now? What are you trying to get me to do? Strip in front of you? Of course! And then you're going to take my hoodie. (laughs) Jeez, crap. It seems to be taking this really seriously. Well, I'd better come up with a good excuse or I might actually have to give him my hoodie. But it's a flashlight. It's a makeshift hard hat. It's a raincoat? Doesn't that seem like maybe the best? That does seem like the best excuse. But this hoodie doubles as a raincoat. I don't want to get caught by surprise in a thunderstorm. You can't fool me. We're trapped inside. Oh, no. That hoodie would only protect your head. It's hardly a raincoat if it doesn't cover the rest of your body. But it's my clothes. My suggestion is to get an umbrella. Yes, sir. I understand, sir. I will take you up on your good advice. Now take off that incredibly stylish hoodie this instant. Okay, maybe it's a hard hat. But this is the next best thing to a hard hat. A a hard hat? Yeah, I mean, this school's really (laughs) dangerous, you know? There's no telling what might happen. So like, just in case, you know? Hmm, you 
may have a point there. I, I do. I totally have a point. There is nothing that this hood can't defend me against, at least compared to every other thing I have <laughs> available for my use to protect my head. Well, if it's for your own safety, I suppose I could give you special permission just this once. I'm glad to hear it. But the instant this school goes back to normal, you will hand over that amazingly cool hoodie. Oi, hey! <laughs> okay, I guess I'll just agree. Students these days are utterly ignorant of proper dress code. It's quite a pain. And frankly, I don't understand youth fashion these days anyway. It's okay, Kiyotaka. To be fair, you under you didn't understand youth, fa youth fashion any other day either. <laughs> So this is a perfect opportunity for me to teach you all about how you should be dressed. Uh, what? And while we're at it, let's go over proper haircuts. Wh why? <laughs> Getting fashion advice from Kiyotaka is, well, uh, I mean, let's just say unexpected. I wear this uniform 365 days a year, rain or shine, flood or drought, wind and hail and hurricane, on ever... darkest nights and brightest days. Do you ever wash it? Yes, I take a shower with it. I also have to say, and I'm going to say this very quietly, uh -huh. which means I'm not going to say it quietly at all, but I think he has the best uniform by so far of a margin that it's not even close. That is a pretty excellent uniform. I especially like his medal. <laughs> yeah! But no, I like his epaulets. Yeah, the thing is, is it looks kind of like the style of like a 19th century military uniform. Uh -huh. And I am a sucker for 19th century <laughs> military uniforms from all over the world. The style was just romantic. Yeah, that's a good way of describing it. I know exactly what you're talking about, too. It's like it makes you feel like you want to hold a saber. And wade into battle. Even whether you're wading into battle or, or not. Like, you, you have become important. You, you can take pride in yourself. They're just so cool. I love them. The clothes do make the man. Even on your days off, even on holidays. School itself may observe holidays, but there's no such thing as vacation for a student. I, I admire your tenacity and your dedication, but maybe this is why you don't understand very many things. There's only one thing I understand, and that's school. So long as I live the life of a student, I will always wear my uniform. Kiyotaka, and I believe we had this sort of discussion with Mondo, which might be appropriate here. <laughs> hey, what are you going to do when you're no longer a student? Uh, I, um... And in all seriousness, I wonder if that's going to come up. Wouldn't, isn't it interesting if it does? That there's would a mean... parallel between their FTEs? Yes. O okay. Also, I have 10 sets of uniforms, so I always have a clean one. There's nothing strange about that, right, I, guys? I honestly was expecting that. If it's all he wears, of course he would have a bunch of sets. No, but I mean, I'd still say that wearing your uniform when you're not at school is totally strange, though. But why do I think that's... <laughs> it's definitely weird, but looking at Kiyotaka, why would you think otherwise? Well, of course that's what he's going to do. Yeah! <laughs> Trust me, wearing the uniform every day helps keep you motivated. You should give it a shot. Kiyotaka is exactly the kind of guy I thought he was. Ultimate moral compass. So in the, so we've already done two of his FTEs, or was it just one? I don't actually remember. There's not a kind of tracker or anything. The last one that we did... Uh, he was trying to call Makoto professor afterwards because yeah, Makoto yeah. taught him something about something that wasn't school. I think we have done two of his. And, and it, it's like the idea for Kiyotaka was that he would approach everything from kind of a learning angle and use of school. Yeah, like we had use, to tell video games use the, were use the school metaphor yeah. to approach everything, and that way he can actually comprehend and process it. As opposed to completely not understanding it. Because he kind of views everything through the lens of school. Well, you know, I, th I mean, yes, I think broader than that is also that he is very rigid and overly disciplined. Like When most of us were young, we were kids and we played and did all that sort of thing. But he didn't, either because of his upbringing or just how his personality was. Yeah, and, you know, I, I've got a lot of things to say about this, but I'm not quite going to do it just yet. Ah, a room like this looks like loads of fun! 
That's good! If it were anyone else, no way! But I don't mind sharing some of my valuable time with you! Now, now, now hold on one second! Before, I lent you my knowledge. <laughs> Next, you tried to get me to lend you my hoodie. I don't care <laughs> what you tell me! I am not lending you my pants! <laughs> I'm weak, Makoto. I've I've kind of noticed. So very weak. What happened? Haven't you realized this school is missing something of utmost importance? Hmm. Textbooks, classes. Uh, well, I can't say I really miss that stuff. You're kind of barking up the wrong tree if you think that's gonna, you know, appear here or help in any way. I'm just going to come right out and say it. I'm freaking out, you man. Know <laughs> this is this is kind of the thing. I don't I don't mean to insult Kiyotaka. I I like Kiyotaka. There's a 100% chance that Kiyotaka and I would get along pretty well on a personal level. Mm -hmm. I I I I cannot stress that enough. But it's like and I I don't mean to be insulting. He sort of struck me as as kind of empty. He's, he's so wrapped up in the veneer of school. The veneer of it, not the school itself. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not questioning his sincerity. It's like, how do I put this properly? He yearns for more. He yearns for things outside of the... And I don't like to use the word duty here. The veneer of duty that he has imposed upon himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he didn't yearn for more, he wouldn't... He wouldn't be so psychologically frail because you can see throughout the course of the game that he's got these moments where he's trying, but he crumbles so easily when people push back against him. Yeah, like he 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 wears his uniform every day. There are no days off for a student. Boy, what a nice hoodie. Wish I could have that hoodie. But there are no days off. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, I don't understand video games. Why don't you study? And and when he's confronted with something he doesn't know, he's very interested in learning it. Sure. But he only knows the things that would come. It's like his parents said, you need to do really well in school and we will praise you. And that was it. And there wasn't anything outside of that. I wonder if maybe one of his parents was a teacher. You know, that's not where I was going. Uh -huh. uh, but let me, let me oh, keep okay. going sorry, before, sorry. We, before we talk about that. Because that's an interesting observation. What he reminds me of is a cup that's, that's like, like a fourth or fifth the way full. What what he wants is to be a full cup or an empty cup, okay? <laughs> I'm not trying to torture the analogy too much, but he's neither. He's a mostly empty cup. Yeah, yeah. He, I'm not trying to say he doesn't believe in what he's in the way he acts, but he knows there he knows there needs to be more. I mean, like everything with Mondo and how right, he's broken right. down. Like you said, that that kind of psychological f frailty. He doesn't have the resilience or the, the equipment to really defend his interest, his, his belief, his way of acting. He just has the rules behind him, and that's not going to help him once he's done with school. Once he's done with school, oh, he man. doesn't have his own core of, of what's... What's him? Yeah, because he wouldn't let himself find out because he was too wrapped up in discipline. Now, that discipline is amazing. Oh, yeah. It's, it's very ability, admirable. It's the ability to, accomp to, to accomplish most anything and to be probably quite successful at whatever he decides to do. But will he be happy? Hard to say. That cup analogy is brilliant, Damon. How's that? What happened when Mondo died? He filled himself up with Mondo. Yeah, that's kind of what I was, what I meant. <laughs> oh, well, okay, okay. I was just furthering it to its to its conclusion. Yeah, and in order to actually become something else, he filled himself up with Mondo and Chihiro because there wasn't a him in there. The thing is, and when confronted about his behavior, he can't even defend his behavior and doesn't really. He just defends it with like platitudes mm -hmm. and then stops and is just sits there withering in face of people calling him an idiot and telling him he's wasting everyone's time. Now, it's not that it, it's like whether whether he fills himself up with Mondo and Chihiro or <laughs> I didn't want to go there, David. Uh, or, and whether whether or whether he he fills himself up with himself, that's fine. Whatever it is, is fine, but he needs to do it because he hasn't yet, and he'll never be a complete person until he finds himself. 
And it's possible, just like how he actually acted much more natural when when he turned into Mondo, mm -hmm. it's possible that he might not actually really like what he's doing. That he actually, he really wants to just he wear felt, the hoodie. He felt and relieved. Really, and really wants to just play video games. And he does want to do good in school, but he's supposed to be like this. Yeah, and that's part of what made me think that maybe one of his parents was a teacher. Yeah, now let's talk about that. That's a really interesting observation. I hadn't thought of that at all. Like, maybe kind of kind of a little pushy about it. Mm -hmm. but well, he's certainly a loud, energetic person. He's also very pushy. He's also very pushy. He may have gotten that from one of his parents. And, and again, he's like, what is it, Ultimate Hall Monitor? Ultimate Hall Moral Compass. I thought, yeah, Hall Monitor. It's just somebody who is really good at following rules. Now, there's a lot of value in that. I'm not. I'm not criticizing that. But we need a Kiyotaka under there. If Kiyotaka needs to find Miyotaka, there's. I do think it's admirable to be a person who who is devoted to following the rules. Isn't the word I'm looking for a creed? You know, let me back off and, and try it like this. Okay talking about Gundam, and I don't mean robot anime, but but rather, you know, Gundam Tanaka. Gundam was somebody who certainly acted weird in a way that bothered other people, but Gundam believed it. If you confronted him about how he was acting weird, he'd handle it. Because Gundam was self-confident and believed in himself. Gundam was overflowing with Gundam. Yes. It wasn't mostly empty. Yes, yes. The cup runneth over. <laughs> but. The holy grail of darkness. Supped upon by the four dark divas of destruction. But Kiyotaka is an empty cup. He doesn't believe. He can't defend himself. He can't push his way of being. It's like he's untested, not because he's insincere, because he hasn't thought to do it. I, he's, he's never, nobody ever questioned why you would need to follow the rules in school and a school setting, like an all-encompassing holistic school setting. So he never did, never learned how to believe in or not believe in like the way he was acting or the way he was. He feels trapped by his talent. Maybe he does, which is why he seems to want to escape it. And it's like, I wish he didn't crumble all the time, but yeah. he does, and he doesn't have to. Anyway, I know we went on for like 45 minutes there, <laughs> but I've had a lot to say about Kiyotaka. We like him. What can we say? I do. I really like Kiyotaka. That's why I want to see him do better, darn it. As we speak, we're being left in the dust by other students our age. You're right. You're absolutely right, Kiyotaka. There's just one problem. What's we're, that? We're in a killing game. I don't follow. We may have other things to think about. For instance, survival. I don't understand. Studying over survival? Yes, well... I'm totally freaking out! Man! Makoto, what should I do? If I keep involuntarily skipping class like this, I'm gonna reach dunce status in no time! Well, why don't you go to the library and read some books? It's, it's not that big a deal, just calm down! Why won't this time machine work?! It's not a time machine, it's an air filter! How do I know that? <gasps> oh, forget about school mode! You were always at the top of your class at the private school you used to go to, right? I mean, you're basically genius level because you work so hard, so <laughs> even if you miss a few classes, it's not the same as just some ordinary kid ditching. It's because he's not a genius. It's just because he studies really hard. Yeah. He's a genius at hard work. Yeah, well, hard work hard work, and discipline are all he has, but hard work and discipline are all you need. Yeah, yeah. But if he still has to find that core... Genius. Don't say that. I mean, finding your core is really what it means to be a high school student. Like, when you're that age, a teenager, rather. When you're that age, that's what you have to do. And it, I mean, it's like... Going back to Gundam, choose to live, right? Yeah, and a lot of people don't, and that's kind of why they have miserable lives. In, in a sense, that's kind of what I'm getting at. In a sense. Huh? I'm no genius. I'm a normal person, just like anyone else. I'm from a middle-class family, you know. Actually, they're not even middle-class. 
That's why I have to push so hard. I have to knock down that wall. You, you are, man. You are. It's not geniuses that change the world. It's ordinary people who make every effort they can. Considering what we just <laughs> recorded right before this. <laughs> uh, in the event you haven't played Danganronpa 2 in the sixth chapter, this is a spoiler. <laughs> Why does this keep happening to us? I don't know. We just did the part. We haven't finished Danganronpa 2 yet, but we just did the part where we found out about Izuru Kamukura, the genius who all who Hope's Peak had wanted to use to change the world. Like, we just found out his name and that he seems to exist. We don't know everything that's up with him. Right. But what I'm saying is, we just were like, the genius who will change the world! And then Kiyotaka is like, geniuses don't change the world! <laughs> Bizarre. I should also point out, I do pretty much agree with that. Yeah, me too. I do, I do pretty much agree with Kiyotaka's sentiments about... Ordinary people being the ones to change the world. Right, right. I had to prove that. I have to keep on making effort after effort after effort after effort after effort after effort after, effort after Kiyotaka.exe has malfunctioned. Just, just don't forget. I mean, I know it sounds hokey, but don't forget to find yourself. Find your core. Be yourself. And then be that person with as, as you, much, as you do it. With as much energy as he puts into being who he thinks he is. Yeah, it's. F I'm not saying that he needs to be somebody else. No. But it's like maybe what he needs to do is wear his hoodie when he's not at school, and that might be all it takes. Okay, that's all I mean. He just needs to not always be in school. Yes. He's always in school. So don't call me a genius. Don't let me in with those lazy clods who don't put in any effort. Oh, how interesting. <laughs> so, sorry, that's not what I was trying to do. Uh. No, I'm sorry. I got a little carried away. Speaking as BSG here, so did we, clearly. But I only said all that because you and me are the same. Huh. You and me, we're just normal people. We know what it means to have to make an effort. Kiyotaka. That's why I want you to know exactly how I feel. Bro. I, I understand. Okay, okay, now I'm bro. I was sensei, then I was hoodie vendor, and now I'm bro. And that's why I'm so passionate about my work on the Morals Committee. I want to create an environment where everyone has the opportunity to give it everything they've got. That's admirable. That's why I put all my blood, sweat, and tears into creating that kind of environment. I want everyone else to understand that too. In the end, you can't succeed if you don't try. There you go. Anyone who says differently is selling something. There you go. Yasuhiro. There you go. There you go. Effort is everything. That's the only way to fix anything in this world. I kind of agree with that. And I have to prove that to all the ordinary people out there so they'll keep on trying. I have to become the ordinary man who can surpass any genius. Huh. It's like this is a lot of determination. It's a shame he never... It's a shame he never learned how to show that determination. Yeah. Those are the feelings I carried with me when I entered Hope's Peak Academy. But now that I'm trapped in here, I've been robbed of the opportunity to make that effort. So now what am I supposed to do? Kiyotaka. Sorry, Makoto. I didn't mean to make you listen to my pathetic complaining. Actually, that was probably, of all the FTEs we've seen so far, the single most revelatory about an individual character's, like, personality that pretty much I've ever seen. There's just not much subterfuge to him. Not at all, no. No, it's, it's not pathetic at all. Like, like BSG said, they actually kind of like you a whole lot more now, even though they <laughs> liked you before. Who's BSG? I can totally understand why you'd be upset. You obviously feel really strongly about this. I really hope you don't give up hope and start to lose track of what you want to do. If you really believe that effort is what matters, then you can't give up, right? And for that matter... You need to make sure that you don't put your effort into the wrong thing. Yeah. Anyway, if you can't make that effort, then what do you have left? Are you empty inside or not? Oh. Uh, I think until you said that just now, 
I'd totally forgotten what I was here for. The foundation of effort is the will to never give up. You're right! I have to try! No matter the situation! Even without classes, without assignments, without hoodies! I can just look back at what I've learned already and reinforce those basic principles! Yeah, good idea! I'm glad we had this talk, Makoto. Wow, I feel so much better getting all that off my chest. As my way to say thanks, next time I buckle down for a study session, I'll make sure to invite you. Oh, thanks. Let's work together as fellow ordinary people to show those geniuses who's boss. His face filled with the unwavering confidence I was used to seeing from him. I feel like maybe... I... Maybe! <laughs> I'm starting to understand him a little better. But I still think he might be a genius. Specifically, ah! he's a genius of hard work! Ah! 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 No, that's real, though. Yeah. The problem is, of course, that nothing ever stops a genius from working hard. Yeah. Still, I did notice one thing. He seems to have a lot of hostility toward the idea of someone being a genius. Is there some reason he feels that way? Maybe we'll find out in the next FTE. Would you like to study with me, Makoto? Just the two of us. Um, well, I mean, I guess, but if you ever talk to me like that, with that, just the two of us, then I am going to have to hit you over the head with a hammer or something. Come to my room. If there's anything you don't understand, I'm a very attentive teacher. And student. Um, I don't think I need you to be all that attentive. But sure, you don't mind if I stop by? Might make you feel better. Of course not. Okay, let's do this. I wonder what his room looks like. With Kiyotaka leading the way, we headed to his room. And it's full of a whole bunch of proverbs on the walls and... <laughs> Welcome, Makoto! You're the first guest I've invited to my room. An orderly set of textbooks. <laughs> That's awesome. You've even got a shinai. Now, oh. now that we're here, let me pose to you a question. You've got to do your daily physical training. A question? Don't worry, no studying required. This is the most basic of basic questions. Very straightforward. So, Can I borrow your hoodie? Haven't we been through this already? You tried really hard to get it before. In any case, is this going to be about geniusing of some kind? <laughs> this should be no challenge for you. Very easy, I assure you. Stop saying how easy it's going to be. That just proves this is going to be the hardest thing ever, and it puts even more pressure on me. Okay. Here we go. And there's an iron because he must have the crispest possible shirt. I wonder if he can even move very well in it. What country first established zero as a numerical concept? I know it was comes from the Middle East. Greece? No, it should be India then. It 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 was a pretty surprising place. It was India, wasn't it? Correct! Good job, Makoto! I had faith in you, and you came through for me! Seeing you get excited is getting me excited! Let's stack our effort one on top of the other and show those self-centered genius jerks what for! So what do you have against genius, anyway? Aren't you also really going to the wrong school if you hate geniuses? I wonder if he has an older brother who's a genius and gets all the attention. That's yeah, possible. Hey, um, Kiyotaka. Uh, yeah? It could also be something that he's not but has been said to be. Mm, mm. Like, oh, your grades are so good in school and you work so hard, you must be a genius, just like Makoto said. Yeah. You're always the top of the class. You're a genius, but it's like he knows he's not. Because he's always busting his butt and not hanging out with friends and stuff like all the other kids. Yeah, it's like, I sacrificed everything for what I have. If I were a genius, I wouldn't have had to sacrifice anything at all. Yeah. Which is also a misguided sentiment, but... Mm -hmm. Well, I just noticed, you really seem to hate the idea of geniuses. This is Hoax Pete, man! You, you just noticed? Hmm, I, I guess I feel like they're just my sworn enemy, you know? Huh. Well, you hit the nail on the head. You're pretty sharp! No, I'm blunt if I'm a hammer that hit a nail! The, the, the claw part's kind of sharp. But you don't hammer <laughs> nails with the claw! <laughs> well, why? There's someone, someone I respect, someone I hate, someone I have to surpass. Aha, we're both right. Because he was a genius. 
Huh. Toronosuke Ishimaru. Do you recognize that name? He was my grandfather. Close enough. He was once Prime Minister of Japan. Ah, and so the problem is, is that he is a normal person. By the way, Toranosuke is a really pretentious name. And yes, yes, some, there may have been some other politician who wasn't pretentious in some other game we may have played on this channel with the name Toranosuke. I'm just saying. But it doesn't mean that it's not a pretentious sounding name. Anyway. Um, Nothing could be more pretentious than Ingus. <laughs> so anyway... I have heard it said that the children of famous people have it really hard because they are typically quite normal. But that they're held up under such a big microscope? Yeah, it doesn't mean there's something wrong with them. It's like this. Imagine knowing you will not surpass your parents. Not like failing to because you made the wrong choices, um, but knowing you can't because they were at the like the pinnacle of the world, and there really isn't anything you can do to match up to them. Think about how much pressure. How, yeah, how crushing that must be to to just make you turn out normal. Like just you, it, just being a normal, dignified person must be so hard like that. Anyway, jeez. He was your grandpa. He went from Minister of Foreign Affairs to Chief Cabinet Secretary, and finally, Prime Minister. That's amazing! And all without any support network, and only a high school degree. That's even more amazing! He was, simply put, a genius. Everything he did, he did without any effort. Yep, it's the... See, you were absolutely right about the uh, family member. Uh-huh. And it was the, the effort thing, like I had said. Gee, it's like we understand this guy or something. Nah. He sounds like an amazing person, and he was your grandfather? He was your grand-grand-grand-grand-grandfather? He was your grandfather? What? How amazing! That was your grandfather? Stop rapping! Are you done talking about that stuff, Makoto? <laughs> <laughs> he was a genius. He'd never known failure. His success was unimaginable to a normal person. That's right! But because of that... He ruined your family! He allowed himself to be controlled by naive emotions and got roped into a corruption scandal. What's up with Toranosuke's and corruption scandals <laughs> on our channel? As far as I'm concerned, that's my headcanon now. That Kiyotaka... Is the grandson of... Yoshida? Yeah, why not? Maybe because uh, he's not Ishimaru? Look, man, headcanons don't have to make sense. Oh my god. He had no idea what the world of geniuses was really like. At least... That's how I see it. At that point, what? he fell just as fast as he had risen. That's because he just rose too fast. He didn't have a support network. Look, I'm not saying that dumb guy, but it makes sense. You go, you go too fast, too you far. You fly too high, the sun burns your wings. Yeah, I'm trying to think of examples of people this has happened to. But outside of, like, Chinese warlords, I can't think of anything. And that may not be the most apt thing to talk about at present. So... And it wasn't just in politics. The business world had no use for him anymore. And he plummeted. The debt he left behind torments my family to this day. Ah, I see. So not only could you not live up to, uh, to his talent, but you also have been crushed by the fact that he never relied on... Ishimaru Toranosuke relied only on his ability, only on his talent... And he went super high, but the mistake he made made him fall super far. But because of the, because his talent was so high and he, and he was able to rely on it to go to being the Prime Minister of Japan, <laughs> based on his talent alone, he never learned how to do any hard work. And he fell so hard, it ruined his family. Yeah, and he never learned how to put in effort. I mean, hell, I know what that's like. I was really lazy for the longest time because I never learned grit because everything I did, I just succeeded at so well. It was, that's miserable. You should... I would much prefer to be in the position of Kiyotaka than, <laughs> than, have, than have that experience. Same here. He died a few years ago. By the end, he wasn't speaking to anyone. Despite his fame, his legacy, the only people who came to his funeral were family members. That's hard to imagine. Some consider genius fate's blessing. 
but I see it as a tragedy more than anything. The tragedy of finding success without understanding the importance of effort. I tend to agree, I tend to agree. There's nothing worse than a genius who trips and falls. Just like my grandfather. And that's why you hate the word genius, huh? My grandfather serves as an important lesson why you must never be deceived by the words like genius. Yeah, this is actually hitting a little close to home for me. I kind of want to clam up. I'm not trying to call myself a genius because it's not really the case, but... Relying on my own effort, I will reach greater accomplishments than anything my grandfather ever did. I shall become president of the world! So we have to work hard to build a society where those who put in the most effort are properly rewarded. Uh, that's... That may be going a bit too far. I, I, I think you're, you're pushing this a little farther than it needs to be. I think everything else you've said is admirable. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't worry about restructuring society to, to reflect your values. Conveniently, the best values, the values that will represent the whole world, that will make everyone in the world rise up from, from failure or mediocrity and from, from poverty and nothingness all the way up to the heights of success and happiness. Happiness, the values and the and the courses of action that will make everyone all over the entire world prosper conveniently are the values you already hold. How convenient! Man, that sure is nice that you happen to hold the key to the world. I like the cut of his jib! My god, dude, that was sarcasm. Uh-oh. I, I see. I, I can agree with him, but Kiyotaka and I aren't the same... I can't reach for those kinds of big dreams. But you know, Makoto, I'm really happy. Okay, so all I meant by that diatribe, uh -huh. in case it wasn't obvious, <laughs> it just... My, my point isn't to beat up Kiyotaka. Um, you know, what I was saying was uh, earlier, like, when I was being critical, was that every time his values were put to the test, as in people were like, dude, you're annoying, or mm -hmm, something mm -hmm. like that, he was always like, blurba, 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 blurba. And trouble. And he crumbled. Someone who assumes that their who already assumes that their values will change the world, but they can't even defend them, is someone whose values haven't been tested and they haven't like he hasn't worked it all the way through yet. Yeah, yeah. Uh challenging your values helps you understand what they are and makes them grow exposing yourself to things that you disagree with may change your mind or it may redouble your own beliefs strengthen your resolve well not just your resolve but make you better able to more articulate your values and your beliefs because you understand what the contrast between your values and beliefs and others are it, it's it's an absolutely necessary part of, of of coming to grips with your own worldview and and how you can actually stand up to scrutiny. I figured this school would be full of geniuses, rather understandably. I mean, I thought everyone would be my enemy, but it's just Byakuya. Everyone else is stupid. Uh, Kiyotaka? I never imagined I'd meet someone here who I could share my story with. I'm so lucky to have met you here! This kind of thing only happens once in a lifetime! I hope we can stay close and combine our efforts to shape things the way we want. Would you like to be my aide when I become Prime Minister? I don't think <laughs> that's going to happen, but yeah, definitely. It'd be nice if we had the time to be friends. Okay! We have to keep on studying! I feel like I've come to understand Kiyotaka a lot better, you know? I think we've finally become friends in the truest sense of the word. The devil wears a high school uniform, is what I assume the rest of that. Yeah. What? No crazy skill? Well, I guess that's what steel patience is. Yeah. Well, there isn't anything else we have to say. I think I kind of spent the entire time blathering on about what I think about this stuff, and Kiyotaka specifically. Really like the guy. I really like him, too. And like many of the characters that we've done so far, he's flawed, you know? Yeah, everybody is. Everybody is. We all are. So, uh, needless to say, I believe in the values that I hold. So do I. If you don't believe in the values you hold, why are you holding them? And if you don't hold any values at all, then what are you doing with yourself? 
do you really know who you are if you don't know what you believe in? Or are you just the ultimate despair? Someone who believes in nothing. Wow, that got serious. <laughs> yeah.